I'm going to allow you to mischaracterize my testimony. I know that I keep money in my house. The amounts of money I gave Mr. Wade, it was never that serious. I don't think I've ever handed him more than $2,500 in a reimbursement. So we're not talking about $20,000 in cash. I don't have $20,000 in cash right now. Joining me now, Chris Landau, former law clerk to Justice Cecilia and Thomas. Also, Mike Davis, former law clerk to uh, Justice Neil Gorsuch, founder of the president and president of the Article Three Project. Chris, let's start with you. Um, your reaction and takeaways from the way that um, Fannie Willis responded to these questions from the lawyers, co-defendants uh, uh, in this case, about the money transfer supposedly between her and her special friend on all these trips that they had time to take with all this government work that they had. Laura, it's just not credible. I mean, the judge is sitting there watching this. I think, you know, the ju this is not lost on the judge in this case. Uh, I think the more important point here is this is the Jerry Springer show, okay? This is not normal that we have these local DAs prosecuting bringing criminal charges against the leading candidate for president. I mean, th this has gone off the rails. And I think we as Americans, whether you like Trump or not, have to say, no, we are not going to let our criminal justice system be abused this way. And I think that hopefully the judge in Georgia will do the right thing and, and dismiss this case or at least disqualify uh, this prosecutor because this is out of control. Now, I want to play a bit, um, and we're going to go to soundbite number five, guys, uh, to you, Mike, about how she tried to handle this question about the cash that she supposedly had on hand. And at one point, she said her father told her to keep all the cash. You always have to keep six months of cash. I've never heard this in my life. You have to keep six months of cash uh, for this. But let's listen to this. The money that you paid Mr. Wade, the cash, in October of 2022, you do not know where that money came from. I do know where it came from. It came from my sweat and tears. You know which job it came from. Did it come from Fulton County or did it come from a private job? It came from, I don't, I'm not a, what are you talking about? So it could have come from a, a private job because before I was DA, I was in private practice. So I earned money during that time period that's probably in there. Well, at one point she was uh, quoted as being kind of rather worried about money because she was going back, she was going into government. She wasn't going to be able to make much money in government. But, Mike, she was extremely uh, belligerent at times, evasive at other times, and refusing to answer questions and deflecting to personal stories. The judge, for the most part, seemed to allow her to get away with it, which I agree with what Judge Janine said earlier today. It was, I mean, I would have shut that down. If I were the judge, I would have been like, answer the question. Yeah, remember what the allegations are here, that Fannie Willis illegally hired her secret boyfriend. She paid him $250 an hour, and she took illegal kickbacks. And so she had a financial interest in this criminal prosecution, which is absolutely illegal, as any lawyer would know. Her defense is, no, 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 no. I didn't take illegal kickbacks. I didn't have a financial interest in this case because I paid back my boyfriends with cash. But I'm not going to tell you where I got that cash, how I paid them back. I, didn't, I don't have any accounting whatsoever of that cash, but you're just supposed to believe me that I paid back my boyfriends with cash. Well, at one point, and we'll go to the seventh soundbite. We have so many soundbites because this was so wild, and Chris can react to this. Um, she, she was pretending like she didn't remember when the indictment, she doesn't remember when their relationship became romantic. She didn't remember a lot about like how much money or where exactly they were or when they went or, um, but this was another moment that I didn't find very credible. Watch. I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after, but the physical relationship. So I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male, he would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that, like, hard conversation. Now, Chris, <laughs> it, this goes just to credibility of basic facts that, again, if you're in a relationship, you know when it begins and it ends. And she kept saying, well, for a man, <laughs> you can see the lawyer's reaction like, what are you talking about? But she did that a lot today. In the end, Chris, given what you've seen, where does this go from here? 
I think the judge, is, the, the specific question for the judge is, you know, should uh, Willis, Fannie Willis, be disqualified from the case? And if so, what happens to the case? Uh, does the, does the, is the taint from her involvement so significant that the entire case has to be dismissed? As Mike just said, there's a very strong argument that she had a financial motive to bring this sprawling case so that she could get kickbacks from her secret lover. Uh, you know, I think the broader point here, Laura, is just the arrogance of these answers that we're hearing and the kind of sense that prosecutors feel like they're above the law. I mean, their whole case is based on this principle that nobody should be above the law. And they kind of get very sanctimonious and say this about Trump. This case shows how much prosecutors in this country actually feel contempt for the law and they feel like they're above the law. And I don't think that will go down very well with this judge. I would hope not. Well, Mike, the question Chris, Chris raises is, is this all then the fruit of the poisonous tree? This entire investigation, which, again, given her background, given everything we know about her family background, her background, she says she's really close to her dad. We'll get into this with our, our, our political panel. But, I mean, does the radical fall far from that tree? Uh, as a legal matter, does this mean the whole case gets thrown out or they, they get tossed and the case continues with another prosecutor. There's no question that Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade must be disqualified. And this judge should also dismiss this case because it's been tainted before its inception with this financial interest that Fannie has in this criminal prosecution. And then the new, the, the attorney general can determine whether to appoint a new prosecutor. And this new independent, non-corrupt, non-biased prosecutor can determine whether to refile these criminal charges. Well, Chris, what about uh, an obligation on the part of Governor Kemp's office? Um, because there are a number of, you know, pro-Trump people out there say that they really have an obligation, too, because state money goes to these county DA offices. And if these offices are essentially, at least, you know, allegedly, uh, it seems like pits of money being wasted in corruption. What about their obligation to step in, at least start some type of, of real criminal investigation here, or at least ethical obligation, even if she doesn't know her ethical, ethical guidelines? Right. I mean, again, it's important for the viewers to understand she is the Fulton County District Attorney. So that is a county within Georgia. The state of Georgia, Georgia has a governor and attorney general. They are in charge of enforcing Georgia's state criminal laws. And it does seem like just on the face of it, there might be some serious reasons to look into possible perjury charges, possible misappropriation of state funds. Uh, you know, these are serious things. And frankly, I think one thing that warrants investigation is to what extent was this local county criminal prosecution uh, incentivized by the Biden administration? What are the links if any, between the White House and these local prosecutions. They wouldn't get into that The today. Alvin Bragg prosecution and the Yeah, York. the judge. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that is. Yeah. And, and Mike. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Chris, but he was, she was asked about this today. And Mike, and, and the judge kind of shut that down. Like, what did you discuss? And then she said, she said, uh, well, I'd love to, you know, I'd I think she said, I'd love to share that. But that was shut down. So we didn't hear much more about that. But going to the coordination issue which, of course, brings us to March. End of March, you're going to have the Alvin Bragg so-called hush money trial begin. Uh, the president's not going to be able to delay that. That was the news today in the other proceeding. Um, what of that? Yeah, so we have President Biden with his fingerprints on all of these criminal prosecutions against President Trump, his leading political rival for November 5th, 2024. And that includes in this New York case where this New York judge who donated to President Biden and donated to Democrats is going to hold this trial with President Trump for the non-crime of a businessman settling a nuisance claim. The prior, <laughs> Ma the prior it, Manhattan D DA, it, the federal... It, oh, God. Yeah, this is a bogus case that is a political case as part of the Democrats' election interference and lawfare. I kept watching this, guys, today. I watched it both as a, you know, a former litigator and just as a regular... American. You know what I kept saying to myself? I can't believe this is the United States of America, that these characters are going to knock a presidential candidate off a ballot if they have their way. These two? 
I mean, just, this is just low life central. Chris and Mike, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.